a couple of things I was thinking about. One is when I was in college, I remember my roommate who was an English major came into our room one day and said, our professor in, in class, this was a guy who had been to church, not Catholic, but been to church, but hadn't really, um, really didn't really believe this stuff, didn't practice his faith. He said, our professor said, you know, it's funny how everyone says that Jesus is God and yet he never once claims it. And I says, uh, yeah, you read through the Gospel of John. He says it right here. I pointed it out to him right here, right here, right here. He says, you know, I, that he was God. But over the years, I came to learn that, well, they just discount John because John was written so much later and he just, he put the words in Jesus' mouth is what they say. But what Jesus really said, he never said he was God. And yet today's gospel puts the light of that because they accept this as something from the quote unquote historical Jesus. And yet this is words that only, only God would say. You have heard that it was said that your ancestors... Dear ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. Words from the Torah. Words from the mouth of God coming through Moses. And then he says, But I say to you, those five words are Jesus' claim to divinity. But I say to you. Okay, God said this, and now I'm going to add on to this. Only God can do that. So just something to, to think about and pray about, and he says, with all that. With the first reading today, I think it's very appropriate the weather we have. Uh, as uh, Elijah is saying, okay, there's going to be rain, and now we've got all this rain, thanks be to God. But you remember, we've been hearing this all week, that um, you, we didn't hear it on Monday because of the feast day, but Elijah is saying, the Lord saying to Elijah, there will be no rain or dew for, until... I give you the word. And so Elijah says, nothing will happen, no more rain or dew until I speak that there will be rain or dew. And so then he, he runs off and, uh, in order to get food and water in, in the appropriate places. And then yesterday we heard about how, uh, two days ago we heard about how he approaches Ahab. And then yesterday, how it's like, okay, the king... Uh, or rather, the, uh, the, the prophets are a ball coming and, and the destruction of those prophets because they didn't follow God. Now, this is just immediately after that, that section where he says to Ahab, Go up and eat and drink, there is the sound of heavy rain. And so then he goes up and he prays and seven times his servant goes and looks out and finally he sees this cloud as small as a man's fist. And he says, There, the rain is coming. And he says, go to Ahab and tell him to, to head, head back. And so they head back. So he sees these great miracles. At Elijah's word, there's been no rain. Now at Elijah's word, there is rain. All this stuff, the power of God. He saw fire come down from heaven when the balls weren't able to get any fire onto their offering. And so you can see kind of Ahab must be amazed in some sense. And yet what you'll hear about tomorrow if you go to Mass tomorrow is that... Oh, actually they skip over that part. Um, but what happens immediately after that is, well, Jezebel says, kill Elijah. Kill Elijah. And Ahab goes right along with it. Goes right along with it. And then we hear about how he goes to the cave, and you'll hear about that tomorrow if you go to Mass. The wind and the, the whisp, small whispering voice. W what am I saying with this? That we can see miracles. We can see mighty deeds. We can have our lives touched by God. But if we do not change internally, if we don't allow God to touch our hearts, it doesn't matter how many signs and wonders there are. Jesus has been doing some miracles, and we'll hear a lot about more miracles after we get through the, uh, the uh, uh, Sermon on the Mount, which we're in the middle of right now and will be for some time. But he said, he's saying, you've heard that it was said, you shall not kill. But I say, it's got to go deeper. It's got to go deeper than just not killing. Whoever says to his brother, Raka, that's, uh, or whoever is angry with his brother, will be liable to judgment can't just ki not kill. You have to root out the anger that's there behind the killing. 
Whoever says to his bro brother Raka will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. That's a, 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 an insult. And whoever says you fool will be liable to fiery Gehenna. That even these other things needed, need to be rooted out in how we think about others, how we look down on others, how we're angry at others, how we put others down. Those, those things, Jesus says, need to be rooted out. You know, he talks about reconciling with your brother and making sure things are right. Unless we allow God's mercy, His grace, to come and touch our hearts, it doesn't matter how many signs we see. After all, we, can't, we who come to daily Mass see every day bread and wine become the very body and blood of Christ and we receive Him. And while that does happen on an objective level, it is transubstantiated. That bread is no longer bread. For it to be sacrament, for it to be transformative in our hearts, in our lives, we have to give ourselves over. We have to have a, a, a subjective response. Saying, God, transform me. Maybe we're struggling with faith in the Eucharist and we just say, okay, God, I believe, help my unbelief. Or I'm struggling with helping to see that this is really you. Help me, Lord. And making that action of crying out. But whatever it may be, we need to allow God to come and touch our hearts. It cannot just be the externals that we do. We have to allow God to seep into every fiber of our being.